grips. So grips are a big part of the club and importance in terms of how they feel in your hands, but also how the club swings. We've had some requests to look at grips uh, based on previous videos, so here you go. So there are two elements to it. One is the size and how it fits in your hands, and the other, which is a video we did recently, James did in the workshop, was about grip weight and what it does to the dynamics of the club. So we'll look at grip size first. So have got a, a standard size Lambkin cross line on this club here. So what we're looking at is how it fits the dynamics of your hands. So hands come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, large palm, small fingers, smaller palm, long fingers. It's really about the, the wingspan diagonally in particular. So the more kind of broad and, and fit, we might say feathered your hand is into the fingers, generally speaking, the more size you're gonna to need to fill that out. So what we're looking to achieve in the hands, actually I'll use my, my own gamer for this. So what we're looking to achieve here is a setup where the little finger is round past the center of the grip. That clamps it in here. Uh, that ensures that that, when you put different loads on it, that hooks around it and holds it in place. Um, ideally just underneath the, 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 pad of the pad of the heel of the hand there. Um, then kind of light contact on the tips of your fingers of your left hand. That then means it's it's in the fingers completely. You've got lots of finger to grip contact, which then means less pressure to have to exert to keep control of it. The other aspect is then when you get into the bottom hand, which I'm gonna go around here. So what we're looking for in the bottom hand is making sure that it sits in this trigger finger, um, in, whether you're in your, your dominant hand, so bottom hand index finger. So when it fits well, it can settle into the finger, you don't have to squeeze down to get control of it. Uh, equally speaking, that if it goes too big, it doesn't get all the way round and it doesn't sort of sit into the hands there. So ultimately getting you to fill your hands out as much as possible, which then allows you to get control of the club with the least pressure. That then allows everything to flow, that gives you the most consistency. So if I go down to a standard size, now I, I go with a standard size grip built up a few layers. So if I go to the, the, just a standard size single layer, what we can see here is little finger is comfortably round past the center here. However, I'm starting to get a little bit of excess contact, a little bit of overlap here. What that does is that creates a gap, depending on how the angle shows, in that part of the grip. So what really that, that allows to do is the, once you have too much of a gap here, the club can move around in your hand. It's not held securely there. So in order to get control of that, one has to grip tightly to stop it twisting. The other bit that can happen is as you get to the top of the backswing, it can separate, leading to a re-grip. So if you don't fill the hands out correctly, it means you have to hang on tight and the club can move around. Both lose your control and, and flow. And the other aspect, if I show the right hand on here, is where my hand, my right index finger wants to sit, it then hangs off the club. So I've got to physically close it down to get control of that. What does that mean from a swinging point of view? So if the grip's a little on the smaller side, then what it means is you can get it into your fingers, you can keep in principle a bit of feel for the club, but when I swing, what happens is that as I move back and, the, and my wrists cock and the club moves, I can feel it starting to move around a little bit in my hands. So automatically what happens is I then clamp down tighten up to try to gain control of the club and lose a little bit of that flow and freedom through. So you end up having to cling on tight. Ultimately, that, that loses that fluidity and flow. You lose a little bit of club speed, but you also lose a little bit of consistency of direction. So too small means grip tension and, and loss of control. What we're gonna do next is I'm going to switch grip over on this same club. We're gonna blow this one off and blow another one back on. I'll whip into the workshop to do that and then come back out and explain going up to a too big a size, what that does to performance. So just switched over to the mid size of the same grip that we were using earlier. So as you can see, the core diameter on the top of the mid size is a little bit larger. So by building it out, it means you don't have to layer up lots and lots and lots of layers of tape to get there. You've already got the scale in the grip. So going bigger, what does it do? Well, in terms of looking at the grip, how it sits in my hands now, what you can see is that's just, just about towards the center of the grip, but only just. And if I put any pressure onto that, 
that slips off because it's not hooked around. Um, that, those fingers are okay, but little fingers only just around it. Uh, and into the bottom hand, you know, sits in that bottom, bottom finger a lot better. So for me, you know, I'm closer to, slightly closer to a mid-size than the standard size. So this is a little, it fits in my hand slightly better than the standard size was. But what happens when you go bigger? So in principle, people said, oh, we'll go bigger, it helps quiet the hands out. It doesn't necessarily do that. You know, slightly too big or too small ultimately creates tension. So for me to stop that grip moving out of my hands, I've still got to hold on to it a little tighter than optimal with those couple of fingers to stop that sliding out. And so again, as you get to the top of the backswing and, and that stops, that can start to lose the control there. Um, and particularly again, an impact, there's a lot of, as the club head stops at impact, as you get there, that again puts a lot of stress on that bit of the hand. So it's really critical to get it fitting into those two fingers correctly. From a swinging point of view, what do we see? So it's a little more, it's, it's only a bit bigger than I would normally use, so it's a little more comfortable in my hands for me, but in terms of what it does to swing with, I still end up, through the swing is generally better because it's closer to my natural size, but through the ball as I finish, I still feel quite a lot of pressure in those fingers, tr having to cling on to get control. So, you know, ultimately for me, erring slightly bigger versus slightly small is a little bit better um, because it allows most of my hands to remain on the club in, the, in, a, in a better scaling. Um, but right at the top, I've got to put a lot of pressure on that finger to, to gain control. What that grip tension can also lead on to, it can lean on some tendon issues in the forearm. The, the tighter you've got to hold on to it, technically the harder those tendons and muscles are. So actually they don't absorb energy quite as much. So in terms of contact with the ground, particularly winter practice, hard, some of the harder mats, those tendons don't, don't react too well when they're hard to shock going through your hands. So if you're hitting into firm mats and you're having to hold on tight to the club, that can create some, some actually some quite bad issues from some golfer's elbows and tendonitis in that, that um, left elbow in particular. So certainly something to be wary of from that point of view. The other bit, going back to what we alluded to with the previous video about grip weights, the difference in swing weight, I mean, Lamkin are one of the grips where they, they ch their grip weights change quite a bit. The standard grip is around the 50 gram mark. The midsize here is 63 grams. So there's a big change in dead weight of the grip. That changes in this club between the two was D3 with the standard grip size, D0.5 with the midsize. That is a massive change in how the club's going to swing. So one of the other aspects in terms of you know, going, going into what does the change in grip weight do, I lose feel for the club head when I just change the midsize grip. So, and this is, you know, there's some huge, huge variables in grip weight throughout the spectrum of grips available in the market. And here we go to, if we go to the extremes, you've got wind to a light, light grip. This one is 23 grams. And that's not even undersized, that's a midsize grip at 23 grams. If you go to the oversize in the cross line, that's a 79 gram grip. So we've got a 55 gram difference in weight, which is the normal weight of a standard, you know, standard cross line, standard rubber grip. Most standard grips are around the 50 gram mark. So that can have a huge effect on the performance of the club and how's it, how it swings. So I'm gonna sort of switch to one of the screens just within a couple of ranges that we're familiar with. This first screen is the tall velvet. What we can see there is, as you go from standard, I've highlighted the correct ones, standard, mid-size, jumbo, and the undersize. You know, this, the undersize and the standard and the mid-size, you're looking at this six gram top to bottom change. That's not huge, that's, that's okay. Um, but then the moment you put the jumbo on, you're going up eight grams over the mid-size. Then you're looking at a 10 gram variation of a standard grip weight. What that also does is when you're adding weight to the grip, you're effectively adding weight to the top of the shaft. You're, you're increasing the amount of club you've got to swing. So not only to keep the swing weight the same, the balance of the club the same, technically you've got to weight the head up more to comp compensate for that. So you're putting not just the 10 grams of the grip on, you're gonna put another three or four in the head. So your best part of 15 grams heavier. And that's going from jumbo to standard. If I switch to a different grip, again, very, very popular one. This is the multi-compound um, in the Golf Pride range. Standard grip weight, 46, 47 grams, and the, just the mid-size, 59. So not only have you got the differences between the different sizes within the different grip types, you've then got 
within the different brands and the different sizes, variations within that. So one of the things that we've become more and more conscious of in our fittings is grip weight and how it affects. You know, if you're fine tuning shaft weight by three or four grams, then if you don't look at the grip weight, you could be adding 10 and you, you straight away gone more than the difference in shaft weight that you're trying to avoid making. So these things are really, really critical to overall performance. If you're changing grip top or if you're changing your grips over the winter or in the new year, the one thing you've got to be conscious of is the weight of them, uh, not just the size, but the weight. So to sort of summarize overall, the grip size is critical to how your hands fit on the club and how relaxed they are. There's an element of personal preference in terms of comfort in the hands as well within that. But generally speaking, I would err uh, to not being too, too small is going to create a little bit more tension, a little bit less, a slightly lesser ability to get flow and release through. So err, uh, slightly bigger. But when I say slightly bigger, I'm talking about one or two layers of tape. Um, so the size affects the relaxation on the club. Uh, grip type is a mixture of feel. You know, the, the, the grip type, you're know, having a bit of a cording, a bit of tread to it, that gives you more texture, more to get a hold of. Some players like a firmer feel. Uh, my personal preference is a slightly softer feel. I get a, not drier skin, but a little bit of a drier skin texture. And, and I find in the winter time, the, in the cold, the cords can be quite harsh. So I, I use one of the Lank and the Sonar series where there's a decent amount of what's called tread on the grip which gives purchase, also gives somewhere for the moisture to go uh, from, the, from the surface so that when it gets a little bit damp, you're still getting some purchase there, some tread. Um, but it's not a harsh grip, which the cordings for some players are just a little bit firm. Um, the other aspect then is, is what it does to the balance of the club. So you know, that then, the grip weight, if you're going up or down in size, or even within the same size to a completely different grip type, that could well have a major effect on how the club swings. So it is a very critical part of the club. It's the only part of the, it's the only bit of the club that you have any contact with. Um, so not only would I recommend consistency of grip type throughout the set, um, I would, it's really, really important to get the right size and the right feel. So very important part of the club and really critical to make sure that you don't just make a change and regret it because one of the weight aspects or the size just doesn't feel right or changes the complete balance of the club and therefore performance.